hard to believe, but it's true. In Texas, it is easier to get into medical school than veterinary school. The main reason being there's only one vet school in the entire state, but that's not the only problem. Jason Whiteley traveled to Lubbock, where he found a shortage and a long overdue solution. I got a Charlotte back here, Bill. That's pretty sick. Cowboys are getting harder to find in West Texas. Pretty sick, Bill. At this feedlot in Lubbock. Get in that corner over there. Nice and easy, Bill. Tony Madrano and his partner keep an eye on 25,000 head of Perfect. cattle. Bingo. Perfect. Good job. They had spotted a sick calf that, that a pen rider's getting ready to pull out of the pen so we can get him out of the pen and get him up to the hospital to be treated. That is Dr. Kenan Sturgis, a veterinarian, which is almost as rare around these parts. There's going to be a fair amount of noise with the hydraulics. Dr. Sturgis has to drive almost two hours from his clinic just to keep this herd healthy. We can see that he's got some discharge out of his nose, and so he's showing a little bit of sickness. That's because Texas faces a growing shortage of rural veterinarians. We don't get anybody to apply. The last time we hired somebody uh, three years ago, we had three applications and we advertised in six states. Turns out most young vets remain in urban areas. But perhaps the more obvious problem, Texas A&M is the only veterinary school in the state. How does a state as big as Texas only have one veterinary school? I'm not into politics so very much, so I don't know how to answer that. Listen to this. In Texas, it is easier to get into medical school than veterinary school. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, how many, how many medical schools do we have in Texas? I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I know it's quite a few. <laughs> and I know we only have one vet school. Oh, good boy. Weston Cleveland is applying at A&M while working here at Live Oak Animal Hospital in Lubbock. We've had students this year, three or four this year, that were qualified students that didn't get into Texas A&M for whatever reason. I would hire them tomorrow uh, if, they, if they chose to come back here, and they're going to have to go out of state um, and pay out of state tuition. Simply put, it creates a brain drain. We have one of the best institutions in the country, but it can only supply about 25% of the new workforce every year. So the state has outgrown what any one institution can provide by many fold over. Last week, Texas lawmakers appear to have finally fixed it, allocating $17 million for Texas Tech to start a second vet school. The feeding industry was here, was set up to establish. One that Dr. Guy Lonner again will become the dean of. We have a construction budget of $90 million, and all of that money has been raised primarily around the Amarillo area, but it's been raised from non-state sources. Tech isn't copying A&M. It's letting local clinics help create curriculum, hoping to eventually graduate a pipeline of new vets willing to remain in rural areas. I think I got another one, Bill. Where plenty of work a triple one. is waiting. In Lubbock, I'm Jason White. Took a hundred years, but what great excitement for Red Raiders Nation. Yeah, well, the governor and higher education Co coordinating board still have to sign off on tech school, but if they give the okay, it would open in Amarillo in about two years. Well,